What's up? Welcome to the Rap Throwback. I'm your boy, the Brainiac Megatron, Diz Megatron. This is a solo kill. We're going to be doing a breakdown on the history of Cam at West Coast G. We're going to be running through all his records, but today we're going to start from the beginning on Cam's Never Again. It came out in 1993. Now, Cam was uh, not really, he's not that well known. Um, I mean, he doesn't have the fame that like Ice Cube has or even some of the NWA members, but he's always been, you know, hovering in the West Coast as a, as a solid, real OG who can bring that heat to your track if you bring him in. Um, one of the things about the guy is how real he just keeps it, you know, he's a... Uh, Islamic and so he's always got that um, nation of Islam flavor on him whether you hate it or love it I don't really mind it I don't I don't know you know sometimes his raps come across controversial and I think that's just the nature of the game you know in this hip-hop shit you got to be controversial right or you got to at least have a have a backbone you know know what you uh, believe in you know not be a softy commercial ass rapper, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, you know, I think I first heard Cam on maybe DJ Pooh's record where he dissed Ice Cube. Um, whoop whoop, that was a dope track. I maybe yeah, I'm I'm trying to think back when I first heard Cam, but I'm thinking that was that's when he got on my radar. You know, he had a couple records. After that, with some uh, good, you know, singles or at least you know some tracks that I cherry picked out. You know, he's been on hits with the uh, MC Ren, uh, Paris, Ice Cube, of course, DJ Quick. Uh, yeah, you know, he's been around the block. You know, he's from Watts. Actually, he's from Los Angeles. I think that's where he originated, but he represents Watts. Um, it's been a been a dope. MC from uh you know that area from the west coast uh Compton Watts whatever you know he's uh he's like I said you know he's got that controversial flavor on him kind of a baritone voice uh he's very comparable to I'd say MC Ren and and Paris you know he's been around the block doing his thing um his last couple records I thought were pretty dope you know the other ones, I like this one right here, Cam, Never Again. This is the first time I've heard it, um, just this, you know, last couple weeks. I guess it just got on uh, the the digital media front, you know, like Spotify and Apple Music, whatever. But um, this is the first time I've ever checked it out. You know, these are the trendsetters of 1993, in my opinion. These are the, the records... Like, these are the bar. This is the bar of the dope shit of 93. So how does Cam Never Again stack up, you know? I'm not saying these are the best records in 93. I'm saying these are my favorite records of 93. These are the ones that had an impact on me. Uh, Ren, Shock of the Hour, Too Short, Get In Where You Fit In, Doggy Style, of course, it's Andre, Black Mafia Life, Isham, Kill the Fetus. So yeah, in my opinion, these are the classics of 93, and I just want to know how Never Again stacks up. So, you know, here we got the, the cover art, you know, it's, it's all right. Um, I, I like the clans guy at the bottom there see cam has a self-portrait and it's kind of a, a deep cover man like there's a lot to this obviously he's uh showing the struggles of a black man and uh the, the conflict and the troubles that black people have gone through which is really what drives his uh high power nation of islam vibe so yeah like you know we got the first track intro um it, it's cool you know you can't go wrong with starting off with some Farrakhan, am I right? You know, we got the intro going. The intro 
it it has no rapping. You know, Cam doesn't really rap on it or nothing. But shit, he uh lays out the Farrakhan, and you've heard some Farrakhan on a bunch of other rap CDs. You know, um, I I think MC Ren, of course. You know, Shock of the Hour and Villain in Black had some on there. Uh, you know, Isham always threw a little bit of Farrakhan in his raps, you know. Farrakhan might as well as just be a rapper, man. I mean, dude sounds good on the mic, or at least he sounds good on the tracks. And, you know, on the mic, too. He's a very charismatic uh, individual. Whether you agree with him or not, he'll fire you up, man. Like, like if you want to fucking hate America, you gotta you listen to that guy, man. And you'll be like, ah, oh, we've been oppressed. All this other shit. But, you know, he does his thing. You don't have to agree with him. It just is what it is, right? The intro, you know, it for an intro, it works, you know. It, it works as an intro. I, I like it. You know, I give it a, I give it a solid uh, eight. Then we get on to the next track here. Number two. This is actually the first song on the record. It's called Peace Treaty. Um, right off the bat, I'm like thinking, yeah, this is some 93 shit, man. So I'm trying to keep everything into, in the proper context, you know, like, especially because I never heard this album until the year 2022. So I got to like, listen to this and think, okay, where was my mind at? What was hip hop like back in 93, man? Shit. I don't even know how old I was. Fuck. I must have been like 13 or something, man. So, I'm not sure how I'd have even uh, received this record back then. Anyways, you know, Cam starts off hot, you know. We're getting a sense of his flow. He's got a lot of potential, you know, like he, he sounds pretty hard. Nothing like NWA, really, or even, you know, his his closest guy, Ice Cube. But he does have that aggressive flow. And he's got a pretty dope voice, man. It's uh, you know, it's like that baritone shit that Ren and Paris have. You know, Peace Treaty. One of the best tracks on this record, you know. I I give it a, a nine for sure. So he starts going into the politics here. Of course. Um, which you'll see that he does on the entire record. He just goes into so many political topics. So this is like setting off the tone of the record. Peace treaty. Hit the park. Yeah, I'm I'm listening to it in the background here. You know, I don't want to get the copyright strike, so I can't play it. But you know, he's got that street vibe to him you know he he knows the lingo but he's uh self-conscious you know he's got a god conscious and it can you know this is the start of it i'm I'm trying to think how i would feel like out of 13 if i was like 13 listening to this for the first time you know like would i would i like it probably man i think the beat is bumping don't do it don't, don't. Yeah, man, I, I don't know what it reminds me of. It reminds me of something. But it's a bump and beat, man. So, Peace Treaty. One of the best tracks. It's a great way to start off the album, in my opinion. You know, it, it just comes out blazing. So, anyways, Stereotype. Another chill track. I say another chill track, but the first track wasn't that chill. But this one is more chill, you know. He's, he's touching a little on religion. And, you know, I guess he's kind of poking fun at his own uh, stereotype, you know. He's talking about, you know, gambling and praising the Lord. Barbecuing the next day. Ladies catching the Holy Ghost. This Oh, oh, and the watermelon, of course. You know, he's a stereotype. It's kind of a fun track if if Cam can do fun tracks, which you know he can, you know he can. He's done it. I don't know about the beat here. It seems like the sample has been used before. I just can't put my finger on it right now. 
But really, you know, he's really hitting home the theme of this record, you know, just being oppressed, the stereotypes of black people, which is really different for a gangster rapper in the 90s, am I right? Like, as we saw Doggy Style, you know, actually we had Shock of the Hour, which had the same vibe to it, so... I don't know what happened in that year, but that movement had started, you know, with Cameron. I don't know about Paris, but Islam rap started having its own flavor, its own little subgenre. It's an all right beat, though. Stereotype, you know? I I give it an eight, you know? I give it an eight. It's not the best one, but it ain't offensive either, you know? So... Let's go on to the next track here. Still got love for him. Now this track is chill. This is chill as hell. This one I could see myself really loving back then in the 90s, you know, as a kid, man. It's an easy track to get into. You know, we got Cam just reminiscing. Growing up poor. You know, just really reminiscing on the past here. I do like the track though. This track right here, I I got to give it a ten. This is so far. This is probably like the do, the the top track on the record. Really, I'm not sure who produced it. I should have the wiki up, but I looked at it briefly and uh, I didn't really recognize any of the producers except maybe one. Um, but that's all right. I think the main focus here is is Cam. So this track here, it's really laid back, man. I don't know if it got any radio play. And tell you the truth, I wondered if this CD was censored, like when I first heard it, because I didn't hear Cam using a lot of like f bombs, you know, say fuck this shit, that or nothing. Like, like where's there's not much cursing on here. So I did have to double check, you know, the Spotify. I'm like, all right, did I get the clean version here? But nah, man, this is the one version. It's pretty clean on the, the standards of hip-hop today. And even Cam's own standards, man. But yeah, the, the track is dope as hell, I think. You know, still got love for him. I'll give this track a 10, man. I'm going to rate it a 10. So let's go back to the... Or let's go to the next track here. You know, Hang em High. A hanging party. You know, it starts off with a little skit here. He he starts off with a good flow. Like, he's already proving that he can flow on a beat pretty damn well. Even though his uh, delivery is still aggressive here, I'm finding that the beat is a little... I don't know. It's uninspiring, really. It, it see, This is a track that can easily get lost in the mix of uh, this album and, you know, 1993 as a whole. So, you know, it's cool. It's got the samples and stuff. It's kind of a repetitive little beat. I don't know, man. It doesn't really, it just doesn't hit home with me, though, that hard, you know. And, you know, in 93, what would I thought? I think I would have thought it was all right. I would have still, I maybe I would have gave it an eight. But now I'm going to kind of give it a 7. I don't think it really sticks as a timeless gem. But, you know, we're talking one track here. You know, one track. Let's calm down. Let's go to the next track here then. Brahma. Which is a weird name. And it's kind of a weird beat, man. You talk about repetitive. You got that, that synthesizer in the back or whatever that is. Just going and going. You know, at this point, I'm thinking... All right, man. Is this as good as it gets? You know, it kind of goes high and then starts to get a little bit low here because I'm giving this track a seven, just like the last track. It doesn't really hit that hard. It's not like horrible, but you know, is it a skipper? It's a fun track. You know, it's a fun track. I don't think it's a skipper. I can, I can listen to the entire record really. But this one ain't going on my 
Ultra Camp playlist. So, did I say this was named Frama? Because on Spotify, the track is called Frama. But it sounds like it's just drama. I'm, I'm going off of Spotify here. They, they, they fucking named it. Did they name it wrong? I don't know. I'd have to check. You know what? Let's just do a check here. Because Frama does not make sense to me, man. I'm going to do some Google here on my phone here. Let's check out the wiki. We're going to check out the wiki here. We're going to discography. Never again. Let's get that track listing. It's drama. It's fucking drama. See, I thought Frama was like a play on drama and fucking and like fucking drama is Frama. But no, nah, man. It's drama, man. All right, let's go to the next track. That that one confused me a little. Another, There's another part that confused me again, and that's really on the next track. Like, Spotify really fucked up on this record, you know? Never again. You know, on Spotify, it says that this features Cam and J.O. Felony and Yuckmouth. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, man. Like, I couldn't wait to listen to this track. You know, I'm listening to this at the gym, and... You know, this is like the first time I'm hearing it, but I'm waiting for that yuck and J.O. And the whole record ends. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck happened to J.O. and yuck? So, you know, I get out my workout and I go check the phone and I and I go back to this track and I listen to it again. And there ain't no J.O. felony and no yuck mouth. You know, they got that shit wrong. I hate it when Spotify gets that shit wrong because... As far as I know, there's a lot of people that don't have physical CDs or never have in their life. And this is what they do. And so, you know, Spotify is gospel to a lot of these people. So, the fuck up of the naming of track number six and the fuck up of the featured artist on seven is, uh, is too bad. I'm going to have to tweet Cam and let him know. We'll do that, man. I've I've tweeted rappers before on uh, corrections on Spotify, and and it usually works out. So, anyways, I do love this track, man. This is a no. This is a ten for sure, man. You know, Cam is doing what he does best. You know, he's political, he's angry, and he's passionate. And man, he's got that fire. You can just sense that fire in his in his belly. The Pilgrims wasn't so friendly. He's dope. So, I gotta say, man, number seven's a gem. Never again. I give it a 10. Let's go to the next track here. Y'all don't hear me, though. Now, this is a pretty dope beat, man. This reminds me of some, uh, some, uh, Bay Area shit, man. Like, like I could hear too short on this, you know? This is a fun track too, man. It's a fun beat. Uncle Tom shit here. You gotta love Cam just uh, staying true to his roots, man. You know, some rappers, it takes them, I don't know, basically a whole career before they start keeping it real, you know, spitting their, their truth. But Cam just did that from day one. And I love it, man. I, was, I, I, would, I would have been disappointed... If he was some, I don't know, pop rapper, you know, not touching on political subjects. But he started right out the gate with his identity. This track is pretty dope, man. I give it an eight for sure, man. I, you got to love the what his opinion on this shit too, man. He's talking about white girls and shit, man. He's talking about eating pork. He's just talking about all that shit that he is always... Uh, against i guess you know he's got strong opinions about and man i love it because i ain't got to agree with everything that cam thinks i don't got to agree with anything that these rappers think but if they're making dope music and shit man and they got the flow and they got the love i'm down with them man i'm down with cam 
I'm down with Deshaun. I'm down with Kanye West. How about all that, man? That's a combo. So yeah, man, that is dope shit here. All right, man. Let's get on to the next track here. Ain't that a bitch? So yeah, Ain't That a Bitch, track number nine. Let's get to it. I think the beat's dope. You know, it's kind of a beat. Cam is still on that, you know, hardcore political shit here. His flow's aggressive, man. He's just being a menace on the mic still. And uh, he's just driving that shit home, man. You know, I think the beat's all right. It's a little bit repetitive, but for 1993, I think it checks out, man. I think I would have been totally down with this record. You know, he's talking about fucking being a soldier, you know, costing, I don't know, getting out there, getting shot in war, can't walk or nothing like that. He totally just, you know, anti-American almost. Maybe totally. I'll tell you what, man. He makes you think. He makes you think, man. So, Life is a Bitch, man. Dope track. One of the better tracks on this record. I'm going to give it a nine. Let's go on to the next track here. Holiday Madness. I like this track. That's easy to say, right? I like this track. This track is pretty funny now. I think that the content, the lyrics, kind of overtakes the beat. Like, it's pretty impressive. Um, it's just shit that makes you think, you know. Cam is like, oh, you celebrating this holiday? What about this and that, you know? Like, your house is a wreck and you're decorating trees. You know, shit like that. It's, it's hilarious, man. And the kid's knocking on his door on Halloween and he just ain't like having it. Crazy. So, yeah. Santa Claus is Satan, according to Cam. I love it, man. I love it. Holiday madness. Now, I could see that there's a point to what he's saying, you know, like, oh, we all, we've been commercialized and shit. And, uh, you know, we, we ain't taking care of the right shit, you know, but we're spending money, giving it to the white man, you know, buying shit, capitalism, yada, yada. I get it, man. I like it. Holiday Madness, man. Let me give it an eight. Let's go on to the next track here. We got Watts Riot. Watts Riot. This one has a Ice Cube. This one's produced by DJ Pooh, which is really the only producer I, I recognize. I mean, I recognize Stan the Guitar Man, but I didn't. I never really heard a bunch of his shit. You know, I heard. I know of him, of course. I mean, who doesn't after Easy E's record? It's a cool DJ Pooh beat, man. It doesn't sound anything like DJ Pooh that I'm familiar with, you know. He's always had more of a, like a more bouncy beat, man. Or bouncy, bouncy tracks, you know. It's got that G-Funk bouncy track shit. This one's a little bit more, I don't know. It's almost like some Cypress Hill shit or something. But it's cool. You know, I like Cam going through his, uh, Political shit here, just keeping it real, you know. That's what this whole record was about. Politics, thought consciousness, just being pissed off. Being fucking pissed off. Ice Cube sounds pretty dope on here, you know. And I guess they're cousins. I guess that's what they say. I never asked. Anyways, there you go, man. Watts right. To hell with all you devils, right? Right. So, you know, then we got the uh outro here, which it's not it's not 
it's not too bad of an outro. He's just given a, a lot of shout outs to uh, his homies. But you know, as an outro, it works, right? I can't really say that there's a lot of outros that are fucking badass. Um, it's a strange outro the way it like starts off. And I don't know if this is the uh, Spotify or the physical CD does this too, but it catches the end of Watts Riot. It's kind of annoying. It takes like a whole minute of Watts Riot. But, you know, after that, you got Cam, gunshots in the back, doing his shout-outs, like I said, you know. It's always kind of interesting. You know, these uh, shout-outs, the funny names that uh, they throw out, they call their homies, you know. We got Woody. The beat itself, I don't know, nothing special, you know. I'm glad he used it as an outro. Not a track, really, you know. Gives a shout out to Ice Cube on here. Calls him his homie and the lynch mob. Definitely was no beat back then. So. So yeah, you know. Cam, never again. All in all, it's it's a pretty dope record. Let's see how it kind of. Uh, how, how how it spikes up. The peaks. Whatever. In the, this is what I got for. This is how I'm looking at it on a graph. Like if I had to look at this record on a nerdy graph. You know, it starts off like around a nine, goes down, you know, the around track three and four, it, it like spikes up and then it gets pretty low up until like track six it spikes up and then the rest of it doesn't like spike below an eight at least, but except for like the intro, but who really cares about that? Um, so you can see, this is how I am looking at the record and how it kind of came out. Like that, that's, that's my shit right there. It's like, yeah, it's got like two tens, you know, two dope tracks that are tens. You know, it starts off, it starts off pretty hot, you know, and I, you could see the dips anyways on this record. Like I said, man, this is all my fucking opinion. It is what it is. Uh, I think overall I'm going to have to give the record it looks like it's i don't know man i'm looking at the fucking graph here that i got on on the video and i think that this album is going to get an eight from me i think an eight's a good good score maybe like an 8.5 you know it's got a couple sevens nothing below a seven uh given the year of 1993 and the all the hot records that it had to live up to uh i don't think it's better than any of those hot records that i posted might be an easier listen than Esham's Kill the Fetus for sure. Um, but it's definitely not doggy style or, uh, you know, it's on Dre. But it does hold its own. And I think it's worthy of uh, being in like the 93 Hall of Fame for gangsta rap. You know, I think it just makes it there. It's Cam's initial uh, release here. He's really getting, you know, getting that vibe out of the, the Islam that uh aggressive like fuck white people fuck america type of record um even though i i don't know if he hates white people or whatever but as a kid i, I always thought that these rappers started hating white people you know like paris and ran and you know cam always had his thing against america whatever and i guess anybody who puts farrakhan on their record you know where they're coming from right uh their politics religion whatever and they're just you know keeping it as real as they can man that's uh what they do so that's part one of our series of breaking down cam that's his first record the next record that we're going to be doing of course is his follow-up made in america K -K -K made in america there's a couple of tracks on there that are uh, for sure classics that one has more of an all-star lineup for producers so it should be really interesting to talk about and of course, we got Gangsta Draysta and MC Ren on that record. Um, let's see what other uh, track listings we got that should be good. You know, I don't know. We'll pull it up next week. We'll run it down. We'll give it a score. And we'll see how it compares to his uh, Never Again record. So 
All in all, man, if you like the video, you know, give us a like, subscribe. If you are here in the podcast, thank you very much. It's your boy Megatron. Soundwave got the day off, but we'll be back, man. Peace and we out.